This particular site, as the sign says, was the submarine mining depot, which was from 1890 to 1922. This is where they stored the mines and prepared them here in Chowder Bay. They strung mines out here in Sydney Harbour. The observers station around the harbour for any ships, enemy ships that come in here so they can spot them and they activate the mines. Boom! Now, these were the type of mines they used to anchor to the harbour floor. These would have been filled with high explosives and uh, quite big aren't they, this one? It's a big fat fella. But this is the type of mine that was used to, they would attach these mines to the harbour floor. Any ship that come along that was not friendly, boom. There's different sizes. This one is a smaller one. This one here is a smaller size. Look at that. You can see the what they used to attach to the harbour floor. Boom! Thankfully, that's not full of explosive. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near them when they go up. Then by 1922, that all changed and became a base for the engineers. And it's the only surviving mines depot in Australia. This is the only surviving one. Mining Corps was disbanded in 1922 and is handed over to the uh, Royal Australian Engineers. From, and then the Army, then the Army Maritime School from 1974 to 1997. Discovery Center here, but the mines were stored in this particular the lower level here because it says here that there was the lower level was built to house mines and there's two foot thick sandstone sandstone walls, separate rooms, heavy timber doors, and a concrete roof which were built specifically to minimize the damage from any accidental explosions. They were set on wooden platforms with a network of railway lines ran between the platforms into the workshops and along the wharf. Ah, they would lift the mines off the platforms using overhead gantry cranes, then load them on the carriages that ran along the railway tracks. Yes, and then they would load the boats. And uh, this is what was two foot thick. Ah, uh, back in the day, back in the day, uh, this was restored by stonemasons and carpenters. Walls and timbers were treated and replaced, and uh, yes, yes, it's uh, all, but this is the area where they kept the mines in. So, yes, I've never been inside here before. I've come through here, but it's the first time I've been inside. Ooh. These were some of the gantries they used to put the mines into the boat as well as that crane over there. Here's one of the original cranes they used to you know, do the work, launch things on the ships and barges. That's the boat shed that was built in 1892 to store the boats that the miners use when they uh, put the mines onto the boats. You can see the slipway there, run the boats down the slipway and then take the mines out to be 
planted on the sea floor by cables and uh, it's pretty dangerous work. Now, the, being a member of the mining corps was pretty dangerous stuff. Therefore, the mine, the men of that mining corps, submarine mine corps, were better paid than most other army units. Now, there's very dangerous work because the mines were attached in the harbour underneath, in the underneath by cables. They had to attach them to the sea floor. And that was pretty dangerous work, I would say. Now, there was an incident in 1890 where they put on a demonstration. The Mining Corps put on a demonstration here in Charter Bay uh, in front of thousands of people and the governor. A terrible incident happened because one of the mines blew up, killing a number of men. So if they really wanted to show the effectiveness of the mines, the danger of mines, they did a pretty good job of it. This is the area that they were operating in. This is Charter Bay, the only surviving mining depot, submarine mine depot in Australia. That's Clifton Gardens over there. But as you can see, we are in Sydney Harbour and it is a truly spectacular location. <laughs>